Welcome back. In this recap, we're going to focus on forms, specifically the form data. Here we have a empty HTML document, and I've loaded this into my browser on the right-hand side. For this example, let's assume that we're going to create a form that will let users enter information about a book. To begin with, we'll be posting this information back to the same location that we were using in Free Code Camp, and then we will post it somewhere else, which will allow us to see the data that's being sent to a server. So here I will create a form element. And like I said, we're going to be using the same location that we used in the Free Code Camp, at least at the beginning. And that location is here, the Free Cat Photo App location. We want to allow the user to enter information about a book. So we'll start off by letting them enter the title. I will create a label here and say this is for the title. And let's put here title. Then inside here is where I'll put the input field and the type will be text. And of course the ID must match what I have in the for attribute, so title. Because we want to submit this data back to the server, I must give this a name. The name and the ID is the same in this case. And it's a self-closing tag, so I can just do that. Now when I refresh the browser, there we go. We have a text field that we can use to enter the title of the book. I'll add a button here. And let's say type equals submit. I'll use that as the text on the button as well. There we go. So now when I enter some information here, I, can, I should get sent to the same page that we saw in Free Code Camp. I can use the back button now to return to this page. Now we can use the developer tools built into Chrome to actually inspect the data that is being sent back to the server. There's various ways to open that up, but I typically just right click and say inspect. So this will bring up the developer tools. You can resize this area if you want, and you can also move it to different locations, like you can move it to the right-hand side if you prefer. Given what we're going to be doing, I think it makes sense to bring this to the bottom. It'll just give us more room to work with, but you can put it wherever, wherever you like. Here we go, and we can inspect the HTML here. And you can see here is the HTML that we typed into our document. And what we want to focus on is the network tab. If you've already got requests here, you can use this clear button to get rid of them. So for this particular example, we need to use this preserve log to keep track of the requests. We use preserve log, and then when we go to the new page, we will still be able to see the history of the previous network requests. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here and type a title of a book. Um, I'm just gonna choose hello again. And this time when I submit this, the network request will appear down here. There we go. So we saw a couple of network requests, but the one we are interested in is the first one here. And I can click that and it brings up this summary here. And if I scroll right down to the bottom, and here we can see the key value pairs. So we have one field, which we've called, the, we've given the name of title, and it shows up here, and we can see that the value is hello. Let me just come back here, and I'll change this to be book name, and save this. Refresh here, and just type um, a different name. 
and submit. Well, I'm going to clear this just so that I don't get too confused with all the requests that are building up. So if I just clear that, and now I submit this, and let's check this first request again and scroll down. There we go. Now the key is book name and the value is goodbye. And that is because I renamed the name attribute here and obviously I typed goodbye into the actual text field. Now let's say we want to give the user the option to say whether this book is fiction or non-fiction. For that we can use radio buttons because it can only really be one of those. It can't be fiction and non-fiction unless it's the news. But um, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's enter this. So after this label here, I need a new one. Label and say for fiction. And then inside here, I'll put this new input. And the type now is radio. The ID needs to match the same value that I used in the for here, which is fiction. And then the name, the name serves two purposes. One is to group the radio buttons and also it'll be used as the key when we send these values off to the server. And I'm just gonna call this literature type. And then I need to actually supply the label for this radio button, which is fiction. Now, if I refresh here, we can see the radio button is between the the title input and the submit button. So I'll just use um, I'll use the the line break element just to just to push the radio buttons below the input box and the button below the radio buttons. So I'm going to add one here and another one after this radio button here. Not label, but br. Now when I refresh here, there you go, that looks a bit better. And again, in the future, we'll be using CSS to lay this out in a much nicer way. Now I need another one of these for the non-fiction option. Let me just copy paste this to speed it up. So this will be non-fiction. It's gonna be of type radio, the ID, is going to be non-fiction, and this stays the same because this is the group it belongs to. Now when I refresh here, there we go. Well, I forgot to change the actual label itself. There you go. And we should only be able to choose one of these at a time. I think I might have done something wrong here. Yep. I must type that. Let's refresh. There we go. So I could tell something was wrong because when I was clicking on the label here, it wasn't actually selecting the, the radio part. Here I can click on the label and it selects the actual radio button for me. But now because the, the four doesn't match correctly, when I click the actual label, it doesn't select the radio button for me. And if I fix this again, refresh the browser, there we go. Now it's doing the job correctly. So let's choose nonfiction and enter a title for a book again and see how this is represented in the network tab. Send this off. Let's inspect this. There we go, we can see book name is goodbye and the literature type is on. And the reason we're getting this is because that's the default value we get for radio buttons if we don't supply a value for them. So there's actually no way for the server to know at this point that we chose non-fiction instead of fiction because we simply just send a, a value of on at this point. So if I come in here, let's put it after the IDs, why not? So the value of this one should be fiction. Yep, and the value of this one 
is nonfiction. It is a bit strange that we are almost duplicating things. You know, like nonfiction appears a few times, but that's just the way it is. They they do serve different purposes, and if you wanted to use different values, you you could do that. So let's try this again. Refresh here. Let's select nonfiction. Put that back in there. Clear this, and push submit. Let's check what we have now. Here we go. We can see that the literature type was now nonfiction. So that value went, that was the value for the key literature type. So we know the server can now tell that from these radio buttons, the nonfiction option was chosen within the literature type group. Next up, we're going to give the user the ability to choose which genre this book belongs in. And those genres are going to be things like drama, comedy, horror, etc. And because a book can actually belong to multiple genres, we need to give the user the option of choosing multiple genres. Therefore, checkboxes would be the correct thing to use and not a radio button. Let's just put this in its own area as well by using the line break element again. Label four, and let's say this is going to be comedy, and then inside here, input type, and we will use checkbox. So the ID should be comedy. Again, we need a value. Let's leave out value for now and see what we end up with. And name. And this is genre. There we go. And let's do a couple more of these. So comedy, drama, This stays the same because it's the group. And let's make this one horror. There we go. The ID is comedy. And the genre is, the name of genre stays the same. Now we refresh here. Yes, ah, I forgot the um, actual labels again. Comedy. drama, and here we want horror. Now if I refresh, there we go. Let's make a few selections, drama and comedy. Let's clear here, submit, and have a look what we've got. Yeah, so we made two selections and they went through as genre on, genre on. So that's not very useful. So therefore, we need that. That's what we end up with if we don't supply the value for checkboxes. So let's give them values. I'll put it after the ID just to be consistent with the other elements we've made. Let's do a copy paste job here. And this needs to be drama and horror. Let's come back to our form. Refresh this guy to make sure that the HTML is updated within the browser. Let's make it fiction, comedy, horror. <laughs> Why not? And let's have a look what we've got here now. There we go. We can see that Two genres were chosen, comedy and horror. So once again, in this example, 
the server just replies with a thank you. So we don't really see that the server has received these values. There is a website that we can use that shows you what values it received. So what we'll do is just tweak our example to use a different server, which will then show us what we've submitted. That website is called Request Bin. And if I just pop in here and go to Request Bin, there we go. So we can choose this option here. And you can create your own Request Bin area if you want. But what we can also do is just choose this public option here. So we can create a public bin. And what we're looking at here is a page that will show us any requests that get sent to this URL that they've generated for us here. So if I just copy this, well, it looks like I can just push this copy button and change the action value here. So we're not going to submit it to the, the free cat photo app anymore, but we're going to submit it to this new location here. Okay, let's choose another name here. I can't think of a book name to use, so I'm just using goodbye. Nonfiction, it can be a comedy and a drama, why not? And now when I send this, it's actually going to get posted to that URL, which is a special server that will just show us any information that we send to it. And we're going to send that to it now. Let's push submit. There you go. Things are happening. And so it's re replied with a bit of, it's replied to the success message. And if we look into this, here we go. We can see that the book name was Goodbye, the literature type was nonfiction, and the genre was comedy drama. So there's an example of a, a real running server receiving a request, interpreting the data, and then presenting it back to us. In a more typical example, the server would do something different with that data. It wouldn't just return it to the user. For example, if you were entering a comment on a website, then it would take that comment information and store it in a database. And then the next time somebody opens that post, the server will fetch all the comments from the database and show the, show the comments to the, the user. But this is a nice tool that we can use to inspect the data that we are submitting. So let's do it one more time just for fun. So if I refresh here and make this a different book title, say it's fiction and just comedy, well, let's do all three, why not? And here we can see the book name was Hello, the, the literature type was fiction, and it was all three genres. Okay, I think that is a good little dive into form data. There is a bit more to cover, but we can do that in another episode. Thank you for watching, and I hope you can join in on the next one. Cheers for now.